back to the channel. This video is the first in a short series of videos about skid control. Um, so, I'm quite looking forward to making this. We found a chap who runs a sort of skid pan area on an old airfield. Um, so we've come down to have a little bit of a play. I've got my son James with me. Say hello James. Hi. <coughs> Um, I'm, going to do, I'm, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about skid control and then I'm going to give you a demonstration about some of the, uh, some of the techniques and it's important to remember that there are different techniques to use depending on whether your car's front wheel drive or rear wheel drive um, and especially whether your car is fitted with stability control or is not fitted with stability control. So what's a skid? Well a skid is, is uh, it's the point in time where you overcome the tyre's grip. Um, so the tyre normally is rotating, the bottom of the tyre, the contact patch is in contact with the road uh, and normally you turn the wheel and the car goes in the direction you want to go, you press the brakes and the car slows down or you're accelerating the car speeds up and that's because the tyre is rotating on the road surface and it's giving you the grip that you want. But you've only got a certain amount of tyre grip available to you and it's easy to overcome that if you're not careful, especially on a day like this in these conditions. So there's, there's three, basically three main types of, of, of skid that you could end up being involved in. Uh, the first one is under braking. So if you press the brakes so hard that the wheels start to lock up and they, and they, they just stop rotating, um, the tyre is going to slide along the road surface. And if your car is not fitted with ABS or anti-lock brakes, then your wheels are just going to lock and, it, and it, it doesn't matter what you do with the steering wheel, the car is just going to plough on in a straight line until you do something about it. Uh, the second type of skid is one that's caused by sort of excessive acceleration and that could be in a straight line or it could be in a corner. Um, that effectively means that you put too much acceleration in and the wheels start to spin. So you overcome the tyre's grip and the wheels start to spin. And the third type of skid is caused by cornering too quickly and depending on the car and the setup that you've got and the stability control and things that can result in the car either understeering or oversteering. So what I'm going to do is a sh uh, just a series of short videos showing those different types of skids and showing how you should react and what you should do with the car if the car starts to skid. So it's how to recognise that the car is getting into a skid in the first place uh, and what actions you should take to correct that skid. First thing I should say in relation to this is the best course of action you can possibly take is not to get into the skid in the first place. So if you find that the car is sliding or skidding or not, not reacting in the way that you want it to, something's gone wrong to get you to that point. So go and look at some of my previous videos about you know, speed assessment for corners, emergency braking, things like that. If you read the road correctly, if you can see the situations before they arise, it's always better not to get into that situation in the first place. But none of us are perfect, and we all get it wrong sometimes. So, when it goes wrong, what do you do? How do you correct it? That's what this series of videos is going to be about. So, the first type of skid we're going to look at in this particular video is braking. What happens if you use the brakes too hard and you overcome the tyre's grip with the road surface? Well, the first thing to bear in mind, there's two things can happen. And it depends on whether your car is fitted with ABS. ABS is anti-lock brakes. And if your car is not fitted with ABS, if you don't know, look in your manual. Go and look in your car manual. Uh, but pretty much any car made in the last 15 years or less is going to be fitted with ABS. It's, it's a very fundamental safety system that manufacturers are fitting to cars. And what ABS does is it prevents the wheels from fully locking up. So we've got to, what you've got to bear in mind with the brakes is that the brakes are most effective just at the point, just before the wheels lock up, before they lock up. And then at the point where they lock up, they're almost completely ineffective because the, the tyre is then sliding along the road surface. So what ABS does is it recognises the point just at which the wheels are about to lock up and it releases the brakes. And it does that 20, 30, 40 times a second. It does it much faster than you'd be able to do it yourself. And what ABS allows you to do is continue steering the car while you've got full brakes on. 
So if I was driving a car now that did not have ABS on it and I hit the brakes full on, doesn't matter what I do with the steering wheel, the car will just keep ploughing on in a straight line. But in a car with ABS, because it isn't quite allowing the wheel to fully lock up, it allows you to still steer the car while you've got the brakes fully applied. So if you've got a car with ABS fitted and you come to an you have to do an emergency stop and the car starts to skid on the road surface, you will feel in most cars these days you will feel a bit of a vibration through the brake pedal and it's really important that you recognise that and you recognise that that's the ABS that's kicking in and you don't do what a lot of people do and panic and think there's something wrong with the brakes and step off the brakes. If there's an emergency, if there's a reason for you to need to brake fully and if the car starts to slide, we want to bring that car to a control stop and avoid whatever it is that's in the road in front of us. So you must remember, keep the brakes fully on, mash that brake pedal into the, into the bulkhead, keep the brakes fully on until the car comes to a stop. And do not forget to steer around the obstacle because the ABS will allow you to do that. So I'm going to give you a little demonstration now and I'll switch the old foot cam on so that you can see what I'm doing with the pedals and you can maybe hopefully pick up that vibration in the, um, in the, in the brake pedal. So we're going to drive towards this little sort of slippery area that we've got down here, a bit of a skid pan that's been set up on this old airfield and I'm only doing about 25 miles an hour, something like that. James, you're washing the car when we get on. <laughs> And all I'm going to do is break in a straight line and you'll see and you'll hear what the ABS is doing. So just when we get on this grassy area here. So what I've done is I've pressed the brake pedal, mashed it into the floor and what I can feel through the, through the pedal is a vibration. It's not a massive vibration. Older ABS systems, the, the, the earlier systems, used to really vibrate quite harshly. Um, but in this car, it's just a little bit of a... It, 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 it's, like a it's like a crunchy feeling, I suppose, under the brake pedal, if you like. But what you've got to remember is don't lift off the brakes. Keep the brakes on. The, brakes are doing, the car is doing everything it can to help you bring this car to a stop as soon as you can. Now I'm going to go around and do it again, and this time I'm going to also steer. Uh, so I want you to imagine, I don't know, there's a child in the road or something like that. It's a slippery, icy morning, um, and we've had to do an emergency brake manoeuvre to, um, to avoid that child in the road. So let's, um, let, let's see what happens, and let's see what happens when I bring some steering in as well. So I hit the brakes now, brakes and steer. And I've kept the brakes fully on there, and the car has allowed us to steer out. Right, I, I, I might have ended up in the bus on the other side of the road, but actually that's just a demonstration of what the car will do when you hit the brakes full on with ABS. Now, if I was in a car that didn't have ABS, so anti-lock brakes on it, um, the car would just have ploughed on, and I could steer this, put the steering wheel on full lock, and nothing will happen while the wheels are locked up. Um, so that's, that, that's quite a nice demonstration that of, of just how effective ABS is in bringing you to a stop on a slippery surface and allowing you to keep some steering control. Let's just do it one more time, a little bit more speed this time, uh, and we'll try and do it as though we're sort of steering and avoiding something that's come out into the road. So we're going to hit the brakes full on now, brakes, steer, avoid and then back onto the left-hand side of the road again. Now what you can remember with, with, with situations like this where you're in a skid, you'll notice that I'm not doing the IM pull-push steering. Um, what I am doing is getting that steering lock on and off as quickly as I possibly can. Remember, this is an emergency. It's not about being nice, it's not about being gentle to your passengers and looking after their, uh, you know, their, their, make, making sure they have a nice smooth ride. This is, this is a situation that's arisen, it's an emergency, it's something absolutely urgent, so we need to maintain control of the vehicle. Okay, so if you've got ABS, clearly there's things that you need to know, you need to bear in mind that you've got to keep that brake pedal pressed, and, but actually, those are fairly 
natural reactions for most people. These systems are designed to help your average driver who, who isn't, you know, generally that interested in increasing the car control skills. So it doesn't require a lot of skill. All it requires you to do is, is, is your natural reaction of mashing the brake pedal and steering around whatever it is that, 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 that's in the road in front of you. Um, so don't think about using any fantastic car control skills in, the, in these situations. Get the brakes on, get the speed off as quickly as you can and steer around whatever it is that's causing you the issue, whatever it is that's the emergency. But what if you haven't got ABS? What if you've got an older car? I've got an MX-5 at home that, that has, it's an, it's an original Mark 1, it doesn't have uh, stability or traction control, it doesn't have any of those modern safety features. Um, so how do we maintain control and how do we retain a little bit of steering control under emergency braking? Well, the, the technique is called cadence braking. Um, and effectively what you're trying to do is, is mirror what the ABS does in the car. So the ABS obviously puts the brakes on and off very quickly. So for cadence braking, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it manually in the car. And this is where it gets a bit more difficult. So if you drive a car that does not have ABS on it, um, you need to be able to have the presence of mind in an emergency to get off the brakes and that's not easy this is something that needs a little bit of practice so the idea is what we're going to do is we're going to brake up until the point where the wheels lock up and then you're going to do exactly what you don't want to do which is get off the brakes because while those wheels are locked like I said they're just sliding along it's like a plough it's just sliding along it won't turn so you need to get the wheels rotating again and the only way you can do that is to release your foot from the brake pedal and once you've released your foot from the brake pedal what we're going to do is just press it again really quickly and then release it and press it this saved me once, cadence braking, I used to have an old Peugeot 306 years and years ago and I was somewhere up in the Yorkshire Dales on a very very cold morning on a long long downhill run and the road was sheet ice uh, and I pressed the brakes and really with quite a gentle press of the brakes the wheels locked up um, and the road was going round to the right and I was not going round to the right with the road it was just going to go straight on it was quite a long drop off the side of the road so I started cadence braking and uh, just got enough steering control back to keep me on the road so I'm talking from experience here it does work this 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 um, this technique so all I'm going to do is drive towards that braking area again now. I'm going to press the brakes and watch my foot on the pedal. Watch what I'm doing with my foot on the pedal. I'm just going to go as quickly and as hard as I possibly can on and off the brake pedal as soon as the brakes have locked up. So we'll just get it up to about 20, 25 miles an hour. Hit the brakes and then... So, I'm not exaggerating, you can see from what I'm doing with my foot, I'm really, really quickly on and off the brake pedal. And what that allows me to do is retain a little bit of steering control uh, whilst bringing the car to a, 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 as short a stop as I possibly can. Um, and it works, it does work. Let's go around and do it again, but this time I'm going to introduce some steering while I'm doing the cadence braking. I do accept that I've got ABS on this car and I can't switch the ABS off. Um, so I, you know, I accept it's a little bit of a false demonstration, but I promise you this technique works. It's a good technique. Just remember, you've got to have the presence of mind, just when you don't want to, to lift off the brake pedal. So here we are onto the slippery surface, on with the brakes, lock. and we come to a stop. Nice safe stop, under control, and in a relatively short, but not, not a short, not a long distance we're stopping in, is it James, considering the speed that we're doing. Um, Ken's braking in a car without ABS is something that you need to practice. So we, if you've got ABS fitted, just follow the instructions I've given you. Mash the brake pedal, steer around the issue, you won't have a problem. Um, if you haven't got ABS fitted, you do need to practice this a little bit. So find a little wet car park, find somewhere that's safe, out of the way, and just a couple of times have a go. You won't break it, you won't do any damage to the car in doing it. It feels a bit rough and a bit harsh. You can see what I was doing with my foot on the brake pedal very, very quickly, on and off. Um, but it does require a little bit of practice. So that's it for this video, that's how to control a car that's skidding under braking. I'm going to make a few more videos today and upload them over the next um, week or so. I'm going to 
going to cover how to control a car that's skidding under acceleration and how to control a car that's skidding during cornering as well that's understeer and oversteer so if you've not been to the channel before please give us a subscribe like the video it helps the channel um, don't forget to go and have a look at the um, at the website as well reglocal.com loads more information there about advanced and performance driving information about the books new book out for Christmas second edition just in time for your Christmas presents and information there as well about how you can get a day's driver coaching with me you can come out uh, or rider coaching motorcycling coaching as well if you want to come have a ride out with me or a drive out with me uh, drop us an email and we'll sort something out But for now, thanks very much for watching and uh, see you next time.